Can anyone hear me? This is what the end of humanity looks like. They came to Earth six months ago. They look just like us. The girl they found on the ship, why did they keep her alive? I'm your dad. I'm supposed to keep you safe. <laughs> and I can't protect you. <laughs> They killed my wife and my son. They're gonna wipe us out. None of us are safe. I didn't ask for this. This is our only opportunity to defeat them. The aliens trust you, you can get close to them. You can kill them all. I know how their race started. They were coming home. Two thousand and nineteen gave us a plethora of media dedicated to the War of the Worlds, with a new audio production from Sherwood Studios, a BBC production that was plagued with the production hell issues, and really wasn't all that bad to be honest. And Jeff Wayne himself, well, doing much of the same as he always has done, really. And then we got an offering from the Canal Plus largely referred to as the Epic Fox production that was shrouded in even more mystery than the BBC version, all we knew about it was that it was set in Europe, the modern day, and starred Gabriel Bell, and it looked very... very different from what we were getting used to. The trailer dropped, and we were still lost for words as to what it was really all about. Or was it even an adaption at all? The aliens weren't present, or so we thought, no tripods towering above Big Ben were apparent, and it all seemed low-key. Nearly as low-key as the hype surrounding it. Whatever this series was, it wasn't going to be the War of the Worlds as we knew it, with many fans wondering why it was called War of the Worlds to begin with, as it simply wasn't anything like previous iterations of the novel. With all that being said, the series eventually dropped in 2019, with eight episodes running with a Walking Dead vibe, littered with a straggling band of survivors trying to come to terms with their loss and an unseen enemy determined to wipe them out of existence. And to me, it was actually very faithful to the core premise of the novel. A seemingly superior enemy intent on wiping out the native population of the planet for reasons as yet alien to our understanding. And for some reason, this invasion seemed very, very personal. There was more than a simple extinction event going on here. On top of a mystery as to where, or in some theories at the time, when the invaders came from, their literal hatred of us, down to a neurological understanding of our physiology, which was something they couldn't possibly have known about, suggested an undertone of malevolence towards us that was more than just a simple, cold, systematic act of genocide against the human species. So my take on the justification for my thinking this is one of the best adaptions of the War of the Worlds is as follows. Now, as many of you will remember my previous criticisms of the book as not being as exciting as some fans would want to convince themselves it is, 
It's a great read, don't get me wrong, but be warned, it does go on a lot with exposition, hefty scientific interlude, and very little going on during the invasion save for a few personal encounters. Really, in the grand scheme of things, the war is just the background events to the actual story, that of the survivor's tale. The narrator isn't looking for answers or trying to solve a mystery. Anything he comments on with regards to the Martians and their intentions are both incidental and retrospective. But at its core, the novel raises a serious question. How would humanity react and behave during an invasion by powers far more powerful than our own? And he argues... Not very well, actually. Throughout the novel, humanity is presented with hubris, denial, mockery, betrayal, opportunism and madness. The narrator himself is no endeavouring hero out to save the day. He is a proud man brought down to a pathetic husk and pushed to murder in order to survive. And in this series, the relationships between every survivor is listed with pretty much of the same behaviours. Their flaws barely hidden behind masks in order to survive the pre-invasion world of monotony and schedule slowly being ripped off as their failings begin to bear fruit in a world barely holding on to what it has left. Whilst trying to survive an unexpected predator, exterminating them like cattle. In the meantime, they are trying to find answers that will save the human race, not realising that that's exactly what the invaders are also doing. And you'll note, I don't call the invaders aliens. And that's because as season 2 progresses, of which I'm up to episode 5 when writing this, the invaders are not only all too human, but I believe the survivors of a species of human that once populated this planet alongside us. And yes, I do ascribe to the theory that the invaders are the survivors of the Earth's first planet-wide race war, who lost and came back thousands of years later to even the score. Don't get me wrong, the genocide they commit on the planet is unforgivable, but you'll note subtle hints on both sides as each go out of their way to demonise the other in order to motivate their troops, and those who survive to commit the most immoral acts with propagandised justification. In many ways, the very theme of the novel is intact and presented in modern day context that could only make real sense given the setting and our current political climate. In this case, the aliens literally came back from another planet. The real war of the worlds is between two human species, not races, who simply can't find middle ground and live together because they are quite literally worlds apart. And this, sadly, is the human condition. And what we easily forget is what Wells made all too clearly in his novel. Before we judge the Martians too harshly, we must first remember what ruthless and utter destruction our own species has wrought upon its own inferior races. The Tasmanian, in spite of their human likeness, were entirely wiped out of existence in the war of extermination waged by the European immigrants in the space of 50 years. Are we such apostles of mercy as to complain if the Martians warred in the same spirit? Wells's words, inferior races, is certainly ill-chosen. But his point is very clear, that the Martians are exactly what we would do if we attacked us. Genocide, whether by accident or design, like what the colonizers did with the Native American population and the Aboriginal people, is something we still do today, or at least stand by and allow to happen, despite our enlightened age. We still strive for purity of nation, borders and even entitlement. And whilst yes, some of this is unintentional, because many races do indeed have black friends as it were, there are those in nations who are ostracised, struggling harder than most due to their circumstances of birth, to make a better place for themselves in a world that tells them to stand back and know their place. Wells's novel is a critical look at race relations that if fans really gave it an analytical look it deserved would horrify most Republicans seeking to ban critical race theory in the classroom. The chosen enemy in this series, being ourselves, or at least an offshoot of ourselves, is well placed. Because as much as I could scarcely imagine the true horror of a Martian, 
there are times when I'm struggling with the true horrors of being human. And you can certainly debate my progressive stance in the comments below. I'm sure that'll be an experience. But it's not all bleak. I mean, yeah, the series is very, 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 very bleak. But at least The Walking Dead left us with pockets of survivors trying to do the right thing in a decaying world. In this series, no one's out to restore anything. They're simply fighting to be the last race standing. And that's as about as bleak a tale as you could literally tell. Our side is working on a biological weapon to wipe out the other side, and the other side, the ones who look like us, are literally hunting us to extinction. Both with histories that justify their hatred of the other. The cycle of demonization seems to be set in place as something that cannot be broken. But there's a whisper, a whisper of doubt and miscontent both sides are intent on stamping out, either by violence or propaganda. A whisper, yes, just a whisper. But it's a whisper that defines hope. As I open with the famous quote by Martin Luther King Jr. So too, few in number in the invaders ranks believe that there has to be a better way. Even Bill Ward, fantastically portrayed by Gabriel Brain in this series, saves an invader from constant torture. And he has more reason than most of the characters to hate them. And he did this whilst at the same time developing a virus designed to kill them. The sheer complexity of the human condition is on display here, that despite all the negative connotations that I have given it, there's still a spark of kindness, light and good in all of us. That small potential can make a difference. There is a reason why the hardest road is the most rewarding for humanity. It's that very struggle to do something right that can make a profound difference to everyone on the planet. And yet there are those that are too comfortable with the status quo. That a better way is not acceptable because the better way is just far too inconvenient. And to many, there's only one way to keep things the way they are. Hope, like light, requires a foundation. A source from which to shine. Darkness is empty, easy, and requires no effort save for that of sniffing out the light at its source. Why fight for a better future when things can be so easy? Well, I don't know about you, but I'd rather live in a world striving for a light and hope than a world content with things the way they are. I may not live to see a bright tomorrow, but I'd like to think that I contributed to the foundation to make one. Because at the end of the day, we have only two things to look at. Either we're alone in the universe, and this is all we have, and to snuff out the only life in the universe would be a sad thing. Or we are not, and if there is even the remote chance we'll meet another alien race, we can at least show them that we are a people worthy of being a part of the wider universe.